Welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, growing subject of natural capital uh, that many of you may not be too familiar with, but uh, just a stat, and I like to start with a stat. Uh, back in 2012, the Eleanor MacArthur Foundation released a, port, a report at the World Economic Forum that said if we move to a more uh, circular economy, taking notice of the importance of natural capital, it will save the EU alone $630 billion a year. So a huge investment opportunity. Now to talk through some of those opportunities, I'm very pleased to be joined by Alina Donetz, a uh, portfolio manager, and her colleague, Christina Church, a senior investment strategist for sustainable investing. And both of them work at Lombard Odier. Um, ladies, thank you very much for joining me. What is natural capital? Natural capital is really an aggregation of um, the most valuable assets that humanity holds. It's everything starting from uh, the earth um, and going into the air and water, but also the entire ecosystems and the biodiversity held by our planet. Natural capital is all about nature. Uh, nature is our most productive asset. Um, and so much of what we use in all types of industry uh, and across all sectors relies on nature, whether it be soil, water, um, and uh, you know, forestry, uh, it's all reliant on nature. And in fact, almost 50% of uh, global domestic pro um, product relies on nature. So Christina, how does natural capital fit into the circular economy? We like to think of uh, natural capital using a metaphor. Um, we think of it being uh, like a caterpillar emerging from a chrysalis and turning into a butterfly. Uh, the caterpillar is the linear economy. It's the take, make, waste economy. The fact that we're extracting huge amounts of resources um, and we're not giving back, allowing nature to regenerate yet. But as, uh, just as the caterpillar emerges from its chrysalis with two wings, we see those two wings being very similar to the, the circular economy. On one side of the wing, you have sort of harnessing the power of nature, the circular bioeconomy. Uh, and on the other wing, you have leaner forms of industry, much more circularity in production and in consumption. And that to us is incredibly important to have both elements uh, when looking at natural capital, that you have to have both wings of the butterfly to fly. And you talk about powerful forces being uh, the driving force, in, again, uh, behind the importance of understanding natural capital and its investment potential. Can you just explain that a little bit more, please? Powerful forces, by that we mean there is uh, a real push coming from various different sectors uh, to, to drive uh, what we see as strong returns in natural capital. It's coming from regulation on the one hand, but also from technology, from investors and from consumers. And we may not as yet have any regulation similar to the Paris Agreement that we have for climate change uh, relating to nature, but we're seeing significant changes coming in the next 12 months. Um, we're expecting to see uh, regulation uh, around biodiversity targets coming in China next year. Uh, we've seen the EU Green Deal focus very heavily on circularity and also on, on plastics, uh, and a new tax is coming in in 2021 focused on plastics. And we're also seeing seeing uh, the TNFD, the Task Force for Nature-Related Financial Disclosures, um, laying out new frameworks for thinking about nature. But it isn't just regulation. Uh, we are seeing a big push as technology costs get significantly cheaper. We're seeing uh, 3D printing costs falling significantly, battery recycling costs falling. Across the whole spectrum of natural capital, we're seeing innovation spurring change. And that's driving investors to get much more interested in the topic. They can see investment opportunities. And of course, consumers too care significantly about nature. We're starting to see a lot more focus on uh, conscious consumption, uh, whether that be in, this, uh, in terms of increase in vegetarianism and plant-based diets, a push away from fast fashion into slower fashion. There's a big push coming and we expect in turn that drives an increase in regulation and drives investment opportunities for nature. Lombard ODA's natural capital investment strategy combines opportunities in the transition to a leaner form of industry and investment in the biocircular economy. Um, can you just explain what those two elements mean in a little bit more detail, please? Yes, absolutely. For us, it's these two wings of a butterfly. We have on the one side, um, absolutely harnessing the power of nature, 
For us, that's a focus on the circular bioeconomy. It really means using nature and using biomaterials um, so that we don't extract as many materials that are not regenerative from nature. Um, it's a focus on fisheries, on forestry, on water solutions, really ensuring that we can do more with nature. Um, and then on the other side uh, of the butterfly, the other wing is, is also circular. It's about much more um, conscious consumption and much leaner industry. And we see that focusing very much on uh, resource efficiency, uh, making sure we do do more with less. Uh, and that might involve uh, more focus on automation and in industry, uh, making sure there's less, less use of materials, smarter materials being used in manufacturing. Uh, we also see a shift in consumption patterns, uh, more focus on outcomes, uh, moving towards a sharing economy and away from an economy focused on things and products. Um, and finally, it's very much waste and moving towards a zero waste economy is important for us. Uh, we're looking at uh, sectors that are focused on recycling uh, and on using uh, smarter waste, whether that be infrastructure, making sure that urbanism can support more and more people, but without using more and more resources. So we see these two sides being harnessing nature, and preserving nature on the other hand. I guess a question that uh, many people will be interested in, is it possible to create a truly global portfolio of companies which benefit um, from these opportunities? It absolutely is. Um, the problem that we have with natural capital um, has already grown to a size where um, the negative externalities are not only inefficient environmentally, but are also becoming uneconomical. And therefore, a lot of companies globally are already creating a transition towards leaner business models, um, which obviously create opportunities for the solution providers that enable such transition. And at the same time, the technological advancements today help us to really leverage from the um, self-regenerative factors of nature that is, of course, not only helping to reduce the negative externalities, but also to create positive externalities and therefore creating more economic value. So there is no surprise that we have already identified over 500 companies that are really leveraging from this uh, transition to lean economy, but also creating the foundation for the bio economy. Why do you believe a focused high conviction strategy of 40 to 50 positions is appropriate? Um, does this not create a sort of higher risk approach? We actually think that about those 50 companies is the optimal size for high conviction, but also a well balanced portfolio. A concentrated strategy really allows us to leverage from the internal expertise that we have developed um, within Lombar around the um, natural capital. Uh, but equally, it also helps us to reflect it effectively in the long term financial performance by accessing the special specialized knowledge and creating a well diversified portfolio. What would be an appropriate benchmark for the strategy? Uh, of 40 to 50 uh, positions and, and why? The most uh, exciting opportunities are really going to be found within the smaller to medium-sized companies because this is where innovation can really flourish at its best. And therefore, we actually think that um, MSCI world of small to mid-market capitalization companies is the appropriate benchmark for this strategy. We're looking for companies anywhere between 1 to 30 billion market cap in the US dollars. What is your experience as a portfolio manager in this area of investing? I have spent the last eight years investing in water thematics, which is very closely tied to um, the natural resources. And my realization through the career is that um, the natural resources of our planet should not be treated separately, but there is a very synergetic relationship between them. So if you're aiming to preserve uh, natural capital as a whole, you really need to have an integral approach to the investment. Investing in solutions to crisis around a or multiple um, natural resources is really rewarding. Uh, first of all, it's coming from the fact that you're allocating capital to companies that really create meaningful, positive environmental and social impact. 
but equally you're tapping into the industries that face really amazing growth opportunities and companies that can create um, very attractive economic returns and therefore financial performance. And just finally, why do you think uh, natural capital is an important long-term investment theme for professional advisors and investors that they should be considering? Natural capital is really an aggregation of the most valuable resources that we as a humanity hold. And yet it has been completely mismanaged um, and underappreciated. So actually investing in solutions that uh, help to preserve it or sustainably source from natural capital um, is not only a way how to preserve our economic prosperity, but it is an opportunity to um, really tap into very attractive growth opportunities and eventually translate those opportunities in the long-term sustainable uh, financial performance. For us, nature is the bedrock of our economy. We can't see growth in our economy without making sure that nature can support that growth. Um, it is also absolutely vital for uh, the future of the, the health of society. There are clear links between the current pandemic and uh, zoonotic diseases coming from animals and spreading to humans. But it's much more than just biodiversity. For us, natural capital covers the whole realm of protecting biodiversity, but also harnessing that power of nature. And without that, we will not see future returns for investors. And we believe very strongly that to invest in natural capital is investing in growth for the future.